Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I talked about the differences between the Montgomery GI Bill and the post 9-11 GI Bill. In today's video, we're gonna go over four specific examples of how you can use your post 9-11 GI Bill and kind of compare it to the standard benefits you get in the Montgomery version. And we're also gonna talk about what is the maximum benefits, the maximum dollar amount you can get while using your post 9-11 GI Bill and it's pretty unbelievable. Okay guys, let's get started. In this video, we're gonna talk about four different scenarios in which you can use your post 9-11 GI Bill. And for all four of these scenarios, we're gonna make three assumptions. The three assumptions are, one, you've earned 100% of your benefits, which means for active duty at least, you did a minimum of three years service. Two, uh, I'm assuming that you have gotten out of the military. When you try and use your GI Bill, Bill benefits while still in service, it makes it much more complicated and it's not as good of a value. The third assumption is that you're going back to school full time once you're out. If you go back part time, you then wouldn't qualify for the housing allowance and that doesn't make the post 9-11 as good. So in this scenario, if you didn't earn 100% benefits, you're trying to use it uh, while you're still in or you want to go back part-time, the math is going to be completely different. Um, so for these four scenarios, those are the three conditions. And just to recap real quick, the Montgomery GI Bill is much easier to understand because it's just a flat rate benefit. Assuming you do the buy-up of 5400 then 36 months of benefits comes out to a total of $77,000. And that money just gets paid straight to you. It doesn't get paid to whatever school or program you're trying to use the GI Bill for. Okay, scenario one. This is Fort Chaffee, Arkansas. And I googled this to find out what is the lowest BAH rate in the country. BAH is the housing allowance. And it belongs to this unorganized territory in rural Arkansas. And what is the closest community college? It is Carl Albert State College. Go Vikings! So somebody out there is from Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, and presumably if they did a four-year enlistment and wanted to go home, this is where they'd end up. So what's the math if they tried to use their GI Bill at a local community college? And Carl Albert is 3400 a year. The BAH for the E5 dependent rates, I've got the uh, screenshot of the calculator over here, is only 813 a month. Now, do the math, four years times that tuition rate, four years times the $1,000 book stipend you automatically get, BAH of 36 months times 800, it's only a total value of $46,000. In this scenario, you would have been better off under the Montgomery GI Bill because that kind of has a standard benefit rate of 77,000. So by so if you switched to the post 9-11, then chose to uh, go to a community college and you're from a less expensive, more rural area, then you would have lost $30,000 in education benefits. I looked up apartments in the Fort Chaffee area. You can get a two bedroom for under 813, uh, you could still probably pocket two to 300 a month uh, using, using your housing allowance. The next scenario is uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison. This is where I wanted to go when I was in high school and I did not get in. Uh, but let's pretend that I wanna be a Badger and I choose actually to go back to school online and I don't know where I would live. I don't have to live in the Madison area, but let's say that I choose to go to University of Wisconsin online. Tuition is uh, almost 13,000 a year. However, for online schools, the BAH is only half of the national average. Because they don't know where you're gonna be living, they just decided when they wrote the law in 2008 to give someone half of the national average if they choose to attend an online school. In this case, it's only 825. You do the math, four years times that tuition rate plus the book stipend, and it comes out to a value of 85,000 uh, total. 
for 36 months worth of benefits. That is more than the Montgomery GI Bill, but not by much. And um, I honestly think that in the near future, they're going to amend the law to give people a better BAH rate. Maybe not, you know, choose your own zip code, but maybe three quarters the national average or just the national average. Because I feel like online uh, education is becoming more normalized and more accepted. So I definitely could see them amending this in the future. But for now, uh, it's still even a better, built, better uh, benefit than the Montgomery GI. You can't really find two-bedroom apartments in the Madison area for uh, 825 a month, but... If you're attending online, you shouldn't be living in a more expensive area anyways. So if you're living with family, then you can just pocket that money. Otherwise, live somewhere cheap or get a roommate, and then you can, you can save the difference for the housing allowance. My third example I want to talk about is uh, an international school, Seoul National University. I lived and worked in South Korea for six years, and attending in... Attending a graduate program over there is something that I always considered doing. And Seoul National University is the best university you can attend in South Korea. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, don't worry, the classes there are all in English. So if you wanted to go to an international university, they're happy to have you. And you could easily uh, enroll in a program either in London, Sydney, Paris, Bangkok, Tokyo and use your GI Bill benefits at a foreign school. How does that work for the housing allowance? They don't try to calculate what it is in another country. They just give you whatever the national average is for the E5 dependent rate. Uh, this year it's 1650. So do the math and that benefit comes out to be $111,000, which is fantastic. And this is $30,000 more than the flat rate you would get under the Montgomery version. And even though this is an international university, I feel like this is probably what the most common average is for a benefit. If you were to do a four-year enlistment, get out, go to college, go full-time, you probably would go back to your home state, Virginia, Florida, Texas, and then go to one of the better state schools. And... 12,000 is, you know, the average for a good state school, and literally the, the BAH is the average. So I feel like in most scenarios, people would be using their GI Bill benefits for about the 100,000, 110,000 range currently, which has exceeded the benefits of the Montgomery version. I looked up uh, housing in the Seoul area. This is the university down here, and you can, uh, you know, stay at a Airbnb if you want for thirty dollars a day. That's nine hundred a month, and you could pocket the difference of six hundred. I'm sure you can find a decent apartment near the university for under a thousand U.S. a month, and then just save the six hundred and fifty a month difference. The fourth scenario is Stanford. Now, Stanford is not the most expensive university you can attend. Columbia in Manhattan is more expensive, and I think uh, a school called Harvey Mudd has actually higher undergraduate tuition rates. But Stanford has the highest cost of living, and when you look up the BAH rate for San Francisco for an E5 dependent, it is 4,368 a month, which is unbelievable. And when you do the math, oh, and the tuition is 52,000 a year, which is over the 24,000 cap. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But what is the dollar value of the tuition times four years plus the book plus that 4,300 BAH? And it is $372,676. pretty awesome, right? And there's something called the Yellow Ribbon Program. Because all of uh, America's elite universities like Harvard, Yale, Duke, MIT, they're all, they're, their undergraduate tuition is all more than 24000 a year. And if the, the post-9-11 GI Bill cut off veterans at that rate, 
then veterans would never be able to go to America's elite universities because it's a, it's a $28,000 difference. So in 2008-2009, uh, the VA introduced something called the Yellow Ribbon Program, and for schools willing to participate, the VA agreed to kick in additional uh, tuition funds if that university would match it. So how this would work if I wanted to go to Stanford, uh, undergrad, uh, the post 9-11 GI Bill automatically covers the $24,477 a year cap. If Stanford agrees to give me $14,000 basically in financial aid or tuition forgiveness, the VA will pay an additional $14,000 to match that to get me to the full tuition costs. So there are veterans that use the post 9-11 GI Bill and they go to uh, maybe Harvard Law or um, John Hopkins Medical School or all of these amazing uh, educational institutions that are more than 24,000 a year. And as long as the school participates in this Yellow Ribbon program, they'll find a way to get you in, assuming your grades are good enough to get into the school. And all of America's top universities, I checked the list, I'll have a link in the description, but they all, they all participate in this fund. I also checked out the, uh, the housing in San Francisco, and for you can get a two bedroom for around 3,000. And then if you want, just pocket the 1300 difference. If you can live on 1300 a month in San Francisco, that'd be a pretty good deal to go to Stanford. I want to end this video talking about enlisted pay. And as an officer, this is something that I hear discussed frequently, how, how um, little uh, first enlistment uh, soldiers and airmen make in the United States military. And you can look at the pay chart where it's about 1800 a month. Uh, you do the math that comes out to be between 20 and 25,000 a year. However, when you factor in the education benefits, uh, let's do Stanford at 372,000, for example, you're earning in future education dollars benefits. 93,000 a year. Add that to your salary of about 22,000 and you're actually making 115,000. And this is before any kind of uh, benefits you would factor in as far as housing, food, uh, the TSP, which is your uh, government 401k. And I, I never knew this until, until I did the math. And I think this is astonishing that as an 18 year old, you can enlist in the United States military and get a really good job. Uh, honest work, you know, working as a mechanic or in security forces or the dining facility, you're, you're 18. And you're really making the equivalent of 115,000 a year. I know me saying that is gonna be provocative and there are people who are gonna watch this video and they're not gonna like hearing that. Uh, even if you go down to the Montgomery GI Bill and take that standard benefit, divide it by four years, add it to the yearly salary, and E2 is making closer to 40, 41, 42,000 a year. And this is before, once again, housing, food, medical, dental, and the TSP. And when I, th when I, when I decided to make this video, I couldn't help but think about my own experience. Uh, when I was 18, I actually worked at McDonald's for a year and I was making five fifteen dollars an hour, the minimum wage, the minimum minimum wage at the time. And I went to university and I did everything right uh, in that I lived on campus, I kept my classes down, uh, I, I worked multiple jobs my entire time in school, and I still graduated with about 40000 in debt. I paid it off within four or five years while working, and then I decided to join the military. And then I learned about the amazing benefits of the GI Bill. And I just think about if I could show this video or have a conversation with 18 year old me, could I have convinced myself to delay going to college until I was 22 to do a four year enlistment, a four year working tour in which basically I'm making six figures. I want to think that I'd be smart enough at 18 to 
be explain this math and then be like, hell yeah, I'll work in a dining facility making six figures and then go to Stanford and live in San Francisco for four years. That sounds like an amazing deal, um, but the past is the past. You can never go back. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, share this math with you guys. And uh, if you have any reactions, please uh, leave a comment down below. In addition, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I can make more uh, military and finance topic videos in the future. And consider subscribing to my channel. I'm a relatively new uh, channel. This is a new thing I'm doing. And I, I, I look forward to seeing you guys the next, uh, next time. Take care.